At Northrop Grumman, innovation isn't just an idea. It's a way of life. The value of performance. Northrop Grumman. I work at Nike as a designer, so I wanted to kind of give you a story of how I got there. And along the way, it's all non-science or math-based, but it's an interesting story anyway. So um, everybody knows about the swoosh, right, and where that's from. How many people here have Nike product? Yeah, almost everybody. That's great. That's me as a little kid. So at the time, grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. So what my big passion was, was I was a sketcher. Now, you've all done this too, right? I'm sure you've got all these little sketches at home. But I was prolific with it. I mean, it, it just, they just kept going and going all the time. They stayed to kind of at about this level, right? But, but uh, you know, that one I really pushed. But this next one, this was my favorite. See, that was our, that was our cat. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, all of a sudden it was like, this is what I love to do day after day after day. And so when I was in class, what I would be doing was doing these little doodles instead of listening to the teacher, unless it was an art class. So I kept going here, and I thought that my adventure would be, I would just be a straight line from being doing little fun sketches to somehow it would become a job that I would do, and people would pay me a whole lot of money just to do that. So I thought, well, that's simple, right? I'll just kind of get a little bit better, then poof, I'm a success. Well, what I found was you know, it was just a little bit more complicated than that. So I'm going to tell you the story of kind of how I got from the very beginnings to, to working at Nike as a, as a designer. So this was one of my very early teachers, and very much encouraging. And she had said, keep sketching. Now, my, I told you about high school biology. The only reason I got a, a C, forget an A, was because I could sketch all the little, little microisms and all the little things you had to do in your little textbook stuff. Well, I did the whole class, right? I would do big things on the board and everything. So I became the teacher, sort of sketch artist. And then everyone wanted to take his class because he had these great illustrations, which are all mine. So it was kind of interesting how you, know, you kind of like all of a sudden find a way through and people start to recognize what the talent could become. A neighbor of mine that I connected in to say, well, what can I do more with this? You know, what, what's the next steps of this? I just don't want to be doing little doodles forever. And he said, you know, how can I help? But, but oftentimes, and I'm sure you've found, you'll go talk to people but they don't really know where to send you. And so he tried, but there wasn't a whole lot of connections that I could make. He gave me one guy, which was someone at another school that was an art teacher. And, and, and he kind of like was really, you know, you're not working hard enough, kind of a tough guy. And we didn't really connect, so to speak. So, so you keep looking for where's that magic going to come from that's going to make me all of a sudden focus in a certain direction. So the next one was, this was just a very close friend that was my age who kind of kept pushing me forward, pushing me forward to kind of take the next steps with things. So as, as we talk through the stories, a lot of your best advisors are sitting next to you. They're your friends that work with you. So you've got to share your dream of what you want and have them help you get there. How about that guy? Another person I ran into, you know, his advice, give up. You're never going to get there. Tough guy to, to, to kind of talk to, just kind of mean-spirited. What to say? You're never going to be good enough. This was a neighbor down the street, an older couple. It was like grandparents. They had, the kids had moved away, but I always enjoyed talking with him. His name was called the Mr. Tapman. Um, he said, let me introduce you to someone. Mr. Tapman had worked in the car industry as a mechanic. So he had worked for General Motors as a mechanic and then had retired and moved into the house down the street from us. He introduced me to this guy who pretty much said, how can I teach you? He was a real car designer. So all of a sudden, all those connection points and talking to and people that said you can't do it and people said you're not working hard enough, all of a sudden I found a connection point in. So, so I kept sketching. You'd say probably I didn't get much better, right? But when I started getting some feedback on how to do this, well, a little bit better. But then all of a sudden, things started to change. 
You know, I was taking some direct coaching from someone that had lived in the industry. So my cars got a little bit more interesting and people started to take notice and I started to learn a lot more about design than just doing little crayon drawings. So all of a sudden, I was on a mission. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I was just early into high school at that point. So from here, I went, uh, I went into design school, graduated from high school, went into, uh, into design school. And they teach you a whole lot about how to draw correctly. But you learn about form and process in manufacturing, all sorts of things. Not a whole lot of math, some science. But it was really now focusing more on how do you create and visualize what can be. So my car sketch sketching got better. And it became fast and things that I started to look through, inventing new things that could be and how they could work. Um, so we kept going and going and going, right? And design school is where I loved it. I was there, I got A's in everything, even beyond whatever an A is, because I just constantly kept working and it loved it so much that I was the first one in and the last one to go home. Sometimes you spend the night at school because it was so much fun and you're learning at such a rapid pace. So sketches became more animated and they even became sort of into the science fiction world of what could be. Uh, imagine cars are completely different at some point. So as this started to happen, I started to say, you know, maybe cars isn't what I want to do. I really want to get into product design and all the different types of products that are our computers and all that sort of stuff. So out of design school, I had four job offers before I even graduated. So the first one I took was with a computer company. would do interesting things like this. This was, I was part of a team on this. There's a lot of people that work on it. But, you know, eventually it became real. It became an advanced concept product for how the Wall Street runs their big computer systems. It had never been done before. And then went on to do all sorts of things with, with headphones, with electronics and games and vid video game type stuff. Cell phones, walkie talkies, all sorts of things that happen. Uh, but I was a runner, a marathon runner, and that was my passion. The, the work side and design was equally there, so I had these two big passions, being a runner, being a designer. And so you kind of said to myself that, well, these are fun products, but wouldn't it be cool to do something different? And you know, as a runner, you loved footwear. Well, how's that gonna work? I, I'm looking in, the, in the San Francisco, there's, there's no footwear around here. My brand of choice was always Nike. I raced in Nike product when it was, a, I followed it was just a little startup company. So it was one of the first shoes I started to run in. So it didn't take long to start to connect the dots that the place I needed to be was Nike. So as I'm starting to think through all of this, guess who gives me a call? Nike calls. We want you to come up and be their creative director. Okay, let's go, let's go have a conversation and see where that goes. This is the Nike campus, the Nike World Cap campus just outside Portland, Oregon. Incredible place. So it's almost like you fall into Disneyland. So I've connected my passion of design, my passion for sport, with now a company that's gonna pay me to do this. What, how do you, what a great experience that is. So another example of the campus, it's a beautiful facility, an amazing place. There's 5,000 people on the campus. Uh, it's almost 100 acres square, so it's a big, big place. Sports all day long. You got the best athletes in the world come to the Nike campus so to, to meet designers and, and work on the next generation of product. And we do a lot of footwear. So it's kind of a dream come true. And sometimes I wonder, maybe it still is a bit of a dream. So one of the projects I want to talk with you about is um, this is, as an example, this is a basketball, outdoor basketball played in China. Now one of the challenges with basketball in China is that it's all outdoor and the surface is very rough. When you play outdoor basketball, the, the shoes wear out pretty fast. You know, they start to look like this very quickly. So, so the idea was, can we do something different that's gonna make a shoe last longer for China market? So the process is you start with the idea of sketching what this thing could be. How's it gonna work? So where the science started to come in now was from a manufacturing point of view. How can we make this differently? So a little sketch with the arrows was an idea of maybe there's a different way we can, we can attach material that's stronger than how we've done before with just little stitching. It's almost like a glue gun. You've all seen a glue gun, most of you? Yeah? So maybe there's a way we can glue this together. So I want to show you a video next of sort of a summary of how it was done and the kind of the key people that were in it, Shane and Shane Kuhatsu mainly, and then Ben you'll see in the video. But it'll talk you through a little bit of a story around how this whole this technology happens. 
What started out as an experiment at the breakfast table grew into the sporting world's premier top secret laboratory. Tales from the kitchen. Hyperfuse. Meet Shane. Hey. He designs next level shoes for the world's greatest ballers. A few years ago, Shane took a trip to the world's fastest growing basketball capital. In China, basketball is an outdoor game played in a hot and humid climate. Shane saw players wearing all kinds of shoes and they were all taking a beating. This game needed a shoe that was strong like a hiking boot, but had the breathability of a running shoe. Creating that shoe was a challenge Shane couldn't pass up. The most durable materials don't breathe, and the most breathable materials don't last. Is there a way to put them together? Fusion. For two years, Shane experimented with different materials and levels of heat and pressure. Finally, he found a way to fuse materials together to create the perfect composite. He dubbed it Hyperfuse. Wow. See, Ben? No stitches. Meet Ben. Sup? Ben is the lead innovator for Nike Sportswear. Ben was fascinated by Hyperfuse, so Shane prepared some light reading to get him up to speed. When Ben started experimenting with this technology, he noticed some happy accidents. The composite materials couldn't completely absorb color, so you could see through one layer to another. The effects were eye-popping. What if I tried this on a Max 90? Dude, we could do that with all the classics. Watch out for the next generation of Hyperfuse coming soon. And stay tuned for the next episode of Tales from the Kitchen. Nike's kind of a cool place, huh? So next was back to sketching again. So it goes through a huge amount of work. This is a ton of research and hours that goes into getting it to this point. And then there's the final direction. So you kind of see a little bit of the process for how that all comes together. So it's very collaborative. We have to work across with materials people, uh, a lot of manufacturing, engineering, to be able to figure out how do you do this in a manufacturing way that for all of you that love basketball product or Nike product, you say, that's, that's a beautiful product that I want to own. So it's very formulaic, but it requires you as a designer or creative person to be able to be, span across all of those dis different disciplines to make it work. So for a creative person in a company like Nike, it continues to force you to be better. These are just some examples of some of the product we've done. To what we do with close-ups, the little details of how, how does this work better? How do we get a lighter weight product that performs better than anything else we've done? The creative side of the company is what generated this work. And it's a matter of how do you manufacture differently that then pushes you in a direction that no, no one else can do. That's part of the challenge of this and part of what makes Nike so unique from a creative point of view. The, the explosion of color. I mean, I look around at all the people that are wearing bright shoes these days, it's kind of funny. Uh, it all kind of, we, we kind of created that whole look of how do you innovate with color? And it became something incredibly bright. We talked a little bit about footwear, but is there another business that we do? Clothing, we call it apparel, right? Okay, so on the apparel front, it's the same process. We work with the best athletes in the world to figure out how to make them faster, make them more comfortable, whatever their challenges are. So these are just some close-ups of details. This is a very new jacket that we just launched. It's extremely lightweight and keeps you very, very warm, so it's a great running product. We do a lot of work with American football. This is the uh, University of Oregon team and how we completely changed the look for them on the field. Um, huge amount of work, but again, it all is a design point of view coming from our apparel team. Another piece we did was, this is reflectivity. And just so for running at night, you're, you're fully illuminated. So kind of have a whole new approach to the whole jacket lights up. And then that set up a whole new direction in terms of uh, what, uh, what safety is like for runners uh, in the dark. And set off a whole new direction. This just all came together this last, uh, this last winter. So what's the next thing that we do? This one might be a little bit harder. We got footwear, we got apparel, we have graphics. Everybody knows what graphics is, right? So that's graphic designers are different than product design. 
So different design elements make up the company and what it can be. So graphics is how do you, how do you bring an expression to a product? So where do you pull inspiration from? So we looked at that cheetah in a high level of detail. And if you look closely, the spots in the, uh, near the head are smaller. And as it goes back towards the back of the body, they get bigger because it looks like speed that's flowing. So when that cheetah is in motion, it actually looks faster than it really is. It's pretty fast, but I mean, it looks even faster. So what we did for a track and field athlete who is one of the fastest in the world gets his inspiration from a cheetah. And so this is what we did for his product. So you kind of see where the inspiration came, up, came from, went on to win Olympic medal. So that's just a little example of just taking from nature a graphic point of view. Another is a story around an event that was for outdoor basketball. And the designer had to come up with a t-shirt for outdoor basketball. So it was the middle of summer, it was hot, and so the idea was he, took a, he got a popsicle and he held onto it and he watched it melt in his hand. And out of that came the inspiration for Make a Melt, which became the t-shirt. But you can see how, if you thought about a melting popsicle, how that would look. And then it went on to become the t-shirt for it. Another example is this is for women's apparel. So actually designing on the form, on the body, what the graphic will look like. This was meant to be a very, very bold graphic uh, compression type. And then this is what it looked like on the athlete. So you kind of see the process that goes through it. So that's all part of what graphic design is about. The last one is we've got retail. So these are some sketches around what retail could be and what it could look like. And these are some images of what the, the original store looks like and ultimately then into the final direction for where it can become. So you've all got a card. And this is the toughest part of the whole assignment for you is Put your name on the card, kind of looks like that. Where you're from, the toughest thing, who are you? So I'm a creative. What's your goal? What's your vision? Where do you want to be? If you're not sure, I put a couple other things in here for you to think about. But the more you write it down, that's what I did when I was your age. I wrote down what I wanted to become, and I had laser beam on making it happen. When you write it down and you show it to someone, all of a sudden, it's real. It's not fantasy anymore. It becomes real. OK? There's one more video that I want to show you, which is a little bit inspiring. But uh, I want you to think about it. And I want you to think about you versus the person in the video. Greatness, it's just something we made up. Somehow, we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few for prodigies, for superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. You can forget that. Greatness is not some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. All of us. We do some very great brand pieces at Nike that spark an emotion. This is a quote from our very first athlete, Steve Prefontaine, a, a uh, distance runner. To give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. You all have great gifts because you wrote it on the card today. So remember that as you go forward. You're going to run into the teachers like I did. You're going to run into the people that want to help you, your friends. You're going to run into the person that's going to drive you forward. If you run into this guy, show him the card and keep moving. Thank you.